They say eyes are the window to the soul. But if human eyes are a window, they'd look like this. Over 24 million adults in the United States have eye issues. Either you're born with eye issues, you grow up to have eye issues, or you get so old that your eyes deteriorate into one big issue. And it's not just bad vision. There's cataracts, glaucoma, retinal detachment. The list goes on and on, and all of it makes me squeamish. And we aren't alone. All of our vertebrate counterparts have terrible eyes as well. So why are our eyes an engineering nightmare? To answer that question, we'll have to look into the eyes of a squid. Do you suffer from age-related macular degeneration, uveitis, keratoconus, blepharitis, corneal ulcers, diabetic retinopathy, strabismus, colorblindness, or astigmatism? Then unfortunately, you may suffer from having human eyes. 400 million years of evolution has been conspiring against you. So let's take a closer look, pun very much intended, at why our eyes have so many issues. This is an eye. The sclera is the white part here. It's covered in tiny blood vessels and made of tough material to protect everything inside. The cornea is a dome of transparent tissue on the outer surface. The iris, the colorful part of the eye here, is a ring-shaped membrane that contracts and expands to let light into the eye. The pupil may look solid, but it's actually an empty hole that light goes through to enter the inner eye. This is a lens. It sits right here behind the pupil to focus light. Light then travels through the vitreous humor before hitting the retina. The retina's job is to receive the light and turn it into neural signals. The millions of light-sensitive cells that make up the retina are connected to the optic nerve, which sends all the information to your brain. But here lies the problem. Our retinas are backwards. These are the photoreceptor cells, and they're facing towards the back of your head, where there is definitely no light. The back of the cell, which doesn't receive light, faces front towards the pupil. If every cell is like a tiny camera, they're all facing backwards. So the photons of light have to travel around the photoreceptor cell to hit the receiving side of the cell. I know, confusing, right? Scientists haven't been able to come up with a working hypothesis as to why our retinas are set up backwards. To learn why, let's take a look at organisms that have a front-facing retina, cephalopods. Cephalopod eyes and vertebrate eyes are super similar, but they evolved completely independently of one another. There are 10 or 12 different types of eyes out there in the animal world, but this one, the camera-like eye, is the most sophisticated, the most complicated, and also capable of the greatest resolution. And we share that also with cephalopods. So squids and octopi have the same kind of eye as well, pretty much, even though they invented it separately. This means that nature invented the camera-like eye twice. Insects, arachnids, and crustaceans have entirely different types of eyes. During the evolution of the cephalopod eye, the retinas never flipped inwards, which is the logical way to have it. And cephalopod eyes have perfectly adequate oxygen and blood delivery to the metabolically active receptor cells. But that doesn't answer the question of the backwards retina. There aren't any scientifically proven positives, so are there any negatives? Well, yeah. Right smack on top of the retina is the optic disc. It's where the millions of photoreceptor cells converge to form the optic nerve. It creates a blind spot in each eye. We don't notice these blind spots normally because the other eye compensates for it, but they're definitely there. Having a blind spot is unavoidable because of the backwards retina, and all vertebrates have it, but cephalopods don't because their optic disc and nerve are behind the retina. And that's not all. A myriad of other eye issues plague humanity because of the backwards retina, like diabetic retinopathy. 80% of diabetics who have had diabetes for 10 years will develop it. In response to a chronic lack of oxygen in the eye, the blood vessels around the retina expand and proliferate to increase the blood supply. Because the blood vessels are on the back side of the retina, which is the front side of the eye, they get in the way and obscure vision, which, yikes. Even more yikes is that to fix it, they take a laser and burn away some of the blood vessels so you can see through them again. But it isn't just that backwards retinas make our eyes a design disaster. Another big problem with our eyes is their size. 
One of the most common issues with our eyes is nearsightedness. Myopia, as it's called scientifically, is caused by our eyeballs being the wrong size. I'm not kidding. 30 to 40% of American and European adults and 70% of Asian adults have myopia, which is nearsightedness, which means they can't see things that are far away because their eyeballs are too long. The light coming through their eyes focuses here, before the retina, but the light actually needs to focus here, on the retina, which it doesn't do. And the backwards retina just makes the problem worse. Myopia is also a strictly human problem. But when we look into the numbers about uh, distance vision, so myopia, losing your, your ability to see at distance, what we find is that this is a relatively new phenomenon in our species. And it began around the Middle Ages. Because what happened in the Middle Ages is that we began to live our lives indoors. Prior to, to that time period uh, in, the, in the history of the West, you were outside most of the time. Day-to-day -day life, you know, basically took place outside. And so our, when we grew up, particularly as children, as our eyes were growing, we were used to seeing at distance. What happens when you spend the majority of your childhood indoors focusing on near objects is that your eyes do not grow to the right length. And, and essentially, they grow too long. But what about farsightedness? There are actually two kinds. One is the opposite of nearsightedness, meaning that our eyeballs are too short and the light doesn't focus before hitting the retina. The other kind of farsightedness is caused by aging. And so to, to accommodate for very near vision, you have to flex and squeeze that lens a little bit. And that's what allows us to see up close. Unfortunately, as we age, however, it becomes more and more inflexible. And the muscles that are responsible for pulling that lens uh, in order to flex it they just aren't strong enough. They're called the ciliary muscles that surround the lens. They just simply can't flex it because it hardens as we age. And so when this lens becomes so inflexible that it can't be squeezed, that's when you lose your near vision. It usually begins to set in around age 40. By age 60, virtually everyone has it. And what's interesting, I've noticed I'm 42 years old, and I've noticed that when I read, I'm getting farther and farther away from my face in order to read properly. And that seems weird, like, oh, if you want to see it, you should bring it closer. But I just can't focus on near enough vision because my lens, like everyone else my age, my lens is getting harder and more inflexible. And there's pretty much nothing we can do about that. Humans have a lot of eye issues because our eyes are so complex but other vertebrates have eye issues too. And all of us have worse eyes than cephalopods. Our backwards retinas are simply bad design, and scientists don't know why they evolved that way. It might have just been a quirk of evolution. In addition, in the past few thousand years, super sharp eyesight hasn't been a trait that has been sexually selected for. That means that when your ancestors were getting together, great-great-grandma didn't really care if great-great-grandpa could see far away. Your body might have been a disaster, but you were smart. So that was another way you could contribute and succeed. And that's not really true for any other animals. I can live in a very different way from someone else and we both succeed. And that's really the power of cultural evolution. And cultural evolution has taken biological evolution out of the driver's seat. Unfortunately, there's not much we can do about it now. Our retinas are backwards and they're not changing anytime soon. Thankfully, 2020 vision isn't necessary to survive or have a happy life. But if any sentient cephalopods roll up asking you why you're wearing glasses, now you know what to tell them. What do you think of the bad design of our backwards retinas? Let us know in the comments, make sure you like this video, click subscribe, and don't forget to ring the bell for post notifications. We'll see you next time.